Up front, I'm joined by Sister Tsepi. So, hello, Sister Tsepi. So, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good. And, and yourself? No, I'm well. I'm well. Sister Tsepi, so please tell us a bit more about yourself. <clears throat> okay, so I am Tsepi So Chabalala. I, I come from a very small town in Lesotho called Mapuze. I grew up there. I went to a nearby non Adventist high school. Um, I was raised by a very godly woman who taught me a lot about God and because of that my my relationship with God developed at a very young age. Mm. Wow. So you grew up with a godly woman, was your mom Seventh Adventist? Oh yes, my mom was a Seventh Day Adventist but my dad was not. Mm -hmm. Alright, so Having grown up in the Seventh Adventist faith, having a very godly mother, what are some of the challenges that you faced? Well, um, I was always different mm. at school. My friends used to party a lot. I never went to school on on Saturday because I had to go to church, and um, they used to mock me a lot mm. because. Um, he used to call me a church girl, and um, I was always seen as that girl who is, you know, I could say boring maybe. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So um, that in itself was challenging because as a teenager, at times you feel like you want to be like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you feel like um, you want to fit in, but yeah. Now. It's very difficult having to grow up and everyone is giving you names, holy girl, church girl, and all these things. Um, and you probably must have a very bad high school experience. How was your high school or your schooling experience? To be honest, I never enjoyed it at all. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. And you, was, you stood firm on what your mother had taught you since childhood. Exactly. I always knew what I wanted. I believe it's because of the, the lessons I learned from my mother, I think it was because of the experiences she had of her life, so I always wanted to do the right thing, mm -hmm. and I think that helped me a lot, especially in making wise decisions mm -hmm. and standing up even if I had to be alone. Mm -hmm. Now, I cannot emphasize how important the role of a mother is enough. Many great men in the Bible are a result of good mothers. Uh, I think in spiritual prophecy we are told that next to Jesus, the role of a mother is one of the most important roles. And whatever principles a mother instills in a child will make or break the child's life. Growing up in this environment, and I, can you say that what made it worse was the fact that it was a secular institution? I think so. You think so? I think so. Because now, it's people that don't share the same faith as you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what led you now from compromising? Because, I mean, influence can really get, it can eventually can get you. What led you from compromising? Well, I think I always, I always wanted what was right. I always knew what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that helped me. That helped me a lot in making decisions. Mm -hmm. So, um, not compromising wasn't easy in itself, mm -hmm. and I believe it was God, after all, who who helped me along. Mm -hmm. So, with God, I was able to just. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in knowing what uh, subjects were you doing in high school? I did math, I did science, I did literature, mm -hmm. I did um, English and many, many more. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, I did science in school and in my matric year I think we got to a point where um, we started discussing evolution, Darwin mm -hmm. and such theories. And for a time, I actually believed in those theories. Mm -hmm. how, how was your experience taking science and not necessarily believing in the same thing that science teaches? Well, at some point, honestly, I thought God 
um, didn't make sense at all or anymore to say um, because now everything I was taught at school seemed to be more logical than what I I was taught at home or at church mm. so I was a bit confused because now I was this was me um, with my knowledge of God from home and now with the knowledge from school I wasn't so sure which one um, was mm. the right information about God mm. so that in itself brought um, confusion in my life. And you began doubting God? In a way. So what then kept you grounded? Well, I just kept on believing. Even when God at that moment didn't make any sense at all. I just kept on believing. And I kept on trusting God even when I... I, I did not understand some of the, the, mm. the things. So, you are at this point where you are doubting God. Your faith is being severely tried, whether you're going to believe in the evolutional theories or stay with the doctrines that your mom taught you back at home. And to you, God didn't make sense, but you believed him. Mm-hmm. In our Christian experiences, many times we get to a point where God and religion and all these things do not make sense. Uh, I think of the children of Israel as they just left Egypt and they are faced with the Red Sea and they're surrounded by mountains and behind them are the Egyptians and God says, go forward. It doesn't make sense, but in that time you have to trust God. So you say when God didn't make sense, you just continue trusting him. Yes. Well, do you think that your experience was going to be any different if you attended an Adventist institution? Well, I believe everything happens for a reason, so I wouldn't wish... For it to be that way mm-hmm. because I believe I had to go through all this for a reason mm. so despite facing all these challenges your faith being severely tried you chose to follow God and you even chose to follow him even to a point of baptism oh yes tell us about your baptismal experience how did you get to that point well seeing how much God has always been by my side how much he has, fought, he has fought for me through all the challenges that I had made me to finally say, Lord, I accept you as my personal savior. Mm-hmm. And then I got baptized. Now, after high school, so you got baptized during your high school, yes. Mm-hmm. After high school, what career path did you want to follow? Well, not after high school, actually. Mm-hmm. During high school, I, I loved literature a lot mm-hmm. and literature is in english english um the the books okay uh, okay yeah. <laughs> so um i loved literature a lot and um at church mm-hmm. i used to enjoy um some bible lessons mm-hmm. i always wanted to know more about god so i think the two made me to um have a desire of wanting to um study theology Wow! so I wanted to study theology but then you know the the environment I was in you know everybody else would want to be an engineer a software developer and then there was me wanting to study theology it was weird for them yeah yeah because they would um, want to know how 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 was I going to earn a a living and to me, it brought a lot of, um, I can say, confusion because now I was confused. Like, okay, I had to. I, I, well, I was trying to 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 reason with God. Like, okay, Lord, I also need some money mm-hmm. and um, <laughs> theology mm-hmm. wasn't the answer for me. So, it really brought a lot of confusion and somehow I lost interest in wanting to 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 study theology or wanting to know more about about God to Mm. say so Mm. so then you finish your school experience Uh and you didn't pursue theology what happened after high school 
Well, after, after, after high school, um, because I was confused. I wasn't sure anymore of what I was going to pursue. So I had to, I decided to take a gap year mm -hmm. to find myself again mm -hmm. and to know what I want. So I decided to take a gap year. And um, <clears throat> I think that moment of isola isolation mm -hmm. um, reminded me who who I am in Christ. Mm. Uh -huh. So, but then I, I I lost interest in in theology. Yeah. Well, my mom is a nurse, so normally when people are sick, mm -hmm. um, they would go to her and she wouldn't hesitate to help. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, developed in me um, the urge of wanting to serve God by okay. helping other people. Okay. So that's when I I got an interest in in the health ministry. Okay. Before you continue any further, after high school you're quite confused mm -hmm. about what you're going to do. Because mm -hmm. going through high school you knew what your purpose was. You wanted to serve God in some in, in any capacity. Mm -hmm. But now the challenges of high school came along your way and it confused you completely. And instead of just going with what the majority is saying, choose this career because it has better financial stability, you chose to take a gap year. Mm -hmm. That's a very important principle that we need to apply in our lives as well. Sometimes the business of life is crowding our minds and many times we end up making decisions that we have not thought through properly. The Bible says sometimes we have to be still mm -hmm. and know that He is God. You have to be busy, you have to be still and allow God to speak to you and give you direction. So now after you took this time of taking a gap year, mm -hmm. you reconnected with God now. Mm -hmm. Now you know who God is. And then God revealed to you through certain circumstances, his providence, through seeing your mother doing certain health work, and this sparked an interest in you in serving others and doing health work. How did, yeah, what happened after that? Well, after that, I, I had a conversation with one of the brothers of mine at church mm -hmm. who... Who spoke to me about the, the missionary, the medical missionary training institutions? Mm -hmm. So um, I applied, but I applied and I was admitted. Okay. Was already preparing to to go to to one of those institutions, but it was I, not pure light that you had applied. It to. wasn't pure light. Which institution you applied to? I can't really recall the name, but it's the one in KZN. Okay. Yeah. So it's, um, it offered uh, three months, and for me, I, that wasn't enough. I thought that wasn't enough, so mm -hmm. I had to search more for, I had to search for other institutions, which maybe could offer about maybe nine months at least or more. Wow. Wait. <laughs> Many people don't want to come to Pure Light <laughs> because it's three years. <laughs> And they say, I'd rather do a short course, three months, six months, because it's shorter and I can get into the field much quicker. But you, on the other hand, are saying, no, this is too short. Let me look for a longer course. <laughs> That's quite interesting. Why did you, why were you working back to front, according to some people? <laughs> well, um, I thought three months wasn't enough to, to transform or change my life. Because mm -hmm. I wanted my life to to change, wow. so I thought um, three months I might go there and get all the information, but might not be fit enough mm. afterwards. So I wanted something that would take me a bit longer. Wow. So for you, you didn't view training as merely just being equipped mm -hmm. to get into the field and work for God. You viewed training as something that's going to transform your life. Mm -hmm. I can say that. That's a very important principle, a very uh, good way to view mission work. Because many times we view mission work as, no, I'm going to get qualified to work for others. Yeah. That's not the primary reason of mission work. Yeah. The primary reason for mission work is for your own salvation. Yes. Amen. My president always makes an example that had, no, I not built an ark, he wouldn't have been saved. Mm -hmm. 
Before you can save others, you must ensure your, your safety first. My pastor prayed and said, let us not be ladders for other salvation, but let us be saved as well. And if you look at the, it's a biblical principle, by the way. Um, Jesus took three and a half years with the disciples. He didn't need three and a half years for the disciples to give them the knowledge and equip them for the mission field. But he took the roughest characters and he saw that three and a half years is necessary in order to get these guys transformed. So for them, the training was not just knowledge imparting. He could have done that in no time. But it was more for character development. And if you notice in the book of Acts, it was only when they were converted that they were allowed to go and work fully for God. And you see this right through the Bible. Paul, Moses, it's more for character development, not necessarily for knowledge. So you wanted a character transformation so that you can, your character can be fit in the mission field. By the way, it's not what you say that has power to convert. Yes, it does. But what you are is much more than what you say. <laughs> How did you get to feel like? <laughs> so, um, well, oh, 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 why pure light? Well, honestly, I just wanted to, to serve God. Mm -hmm. I, I, I did not know a lot about being a missionary as mm -hmm. such. Okay. Um, so after finding out about Pure Light, um, finding out, okay, it takes three years of training. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, so this is the this one. Is the one. Wow. I didn't know anything about Pure Light, what they offer here. I just... You just knew the years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew the years. And, um, <laughs> then I decided to, to join the, the mission, the, yeah. the institution. For many people that apply Pure Light, I'll say this again, there are many challenges that you face during application until the time you arrive here. What are some of the challenges that you faced, if there are any? Um, not many challenges. Not many challenges for <laughs> me. Really. Wow. Well, apart from the fact that um, it was really long. The, the, the policy, the application, application. <laughs> I mean, sorry. Yeah, the application was very long. And well, um, another thing is that um, I was late. Okay. The, 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 the time for submitting the applications closed. was yeah. not closed. So when I applied, mm -hmm. well, I just I, I honestly I, I, I never thought I was going to be here because I was first of all I was already late and yeah. Mm. So I never thought I was going to be admitted. But then my mom kept on pushing me and she told me that you are going. Wow. And um well honestly I didn't believe it well mm -hmm. uh, at all, I mean. I didn't believe I would be here. But um mm -hmm. through my mother's faith I believe I'm here. Praise God. Now, obviously when you're back home, there are certain expectations that you had that you're going to receive at Pure Light. You're expected to receive uh, training and obviously character transformation. That's what you really wanted. Mm -hmm. You've been a week here at Pure Light. You're a week old <laughs> at Pure Light. <laughs> and we learned so much this past week in our orientation week. Mm -hmm. How is Pure Light for you? Interesting. Very much. <laughs> well, um, to be honest, um, what is offered here is not what I really had in mind. Because okay. I just came here <coughs> with intentions of just, you know, being taught how to serve God. And like um, the missionary part, mm -hmm. I didn't know anything. But then after the orientation, mm -hmm. I was like, wow, um, God really wanted me to be here. Wow. I felt like um, he chose me. Hmm. And um, that's when I, I realized that God's time, because God, God's time is um, it's perfect. perfect. <laughs> yeah, God's timing is always perfect. perfect. And um, 
Yeah. Now, we had our orientation week. Mm -hmm. What lessons stood out for you? The, 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 the three angels message. The Elijah message. The, the Elijah message, yeah. It really, well, I thought I knew what being a Christian or, or living um, or having a, a Christ-like lifestyle mm -hmm. was. I thought I knew that, but until I yeah. got through the... Mm -hmm. Now, you, all, you only have been a week old at your life, <laughs> and it seems like your mind is it's already blown. Mm -hmm. You have three years to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are your expectations? Well, um... <coughs> well, what do you see your life doing okay. in you? I know um, there are going to be quite a lot of challenges mm -hmm. that I'm willing to, with God by my side, I'm willing to overcome. And it's only through the, the challenges that we grow. So mm -hmm. I just want to grow and be a better person. Wow. Mm. Can you tell us, please, what program are you enrolling with your lad? Uh, a health major. A health major. Mm -hmm. That's quite weird because mm -hmm. earlier you wanted to enroll in theology. Mm -hmm. What brought about? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, like I said, my mom is a nurse. Okay. So um, I think her being a nurse mm -hmm. in general led me into wanting to be <laughs> a... No, we praise God, Sister Tip is for your testimony. Now, a young person who's probably your age is out there and they're watching, you know, and they're like, how does someone like me, with the whole world before them, choose to be a missionary? You know, that's like, for people that have given up on life, or people that have no hope, that's what people view mission work as. What is your advice to that person, to that fellow young person that might want to be like you? Well, um, I don't have much to say really, apart from the fact that when God makes no sense, because He didn't make any sense of at all, I mean to say sorry, God did not make any sense at all to me because I was confused. Mm -hmm. I did not know what was going on in my life. But I knew that all the challenges that I had been through um, were there for a reason. So at that time, I did not understand um, anything. Like I said, I was a bit confused. So I would like to say that when God makes no sense, you just trust Him more and more. Mm -hmm. Put all doubt aside and only trust and believe. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Sister Tepiso, for sharing your testimony, and we are so grateful that you are yet to your life, and we pray that God may continue to lead you and to guide you, and I'll give your own advice to you that sometimes God is not going to make sense at pure light. <laughs> but trust God, because at the end of every year, you'll be like, but God was leading me through these challenges. So may God really help you, and may God give you strength for the new journey that you've taken. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us once again for another testimony from our first year student. And unfortunately, this is the end of today's episode. We'll see you again next time.